You're good. Keep going. Keep going. More. I'll tell you when. Keep going. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're doing some off-roading off the Forest Hill Road. Um, we're just looking for dirt roads to take. Um, this is near Auburn, uh, California. As you can see, we got these really beautiful landscape views. Um, and today we're going to interview my brother. He bought himself a new truck and he's going to tell us all about it. So let's go find him and uh, see what he has to say. Driving through days and hey Dan. Hey guys. How's it going man? Doing great. How are you guys? Heard you got yourself a new truck. Yes I did. I got myself a 1999 Toyota 4 Runner and it's standing right here. Alright Dan, you want to show us around? Yeah sure guys. Let's take, take a step over here. Alright yeah, just pop the hood. We'll take a look underneath your... Uh... Let's start off with the meat of this <laughs> car. Now it's a 1999 Toyota Foreigner. It's a currently in stock form, but it's plenty enough to have some fun. Under the engine, we have the legendary Toyota V6, a 3.4. Um, puts out about 180 horsepower. It's definitely enough to go on road trips, stuff like that. How many miles have you got on it? This thing currently has 232,000 miles on it. Wow. And it runs like a clock like this thing has no problems no overheating problems um, the previous owner swapped out the radiator so that's fresh um, yeah that's the engine it's there's nothing much to it what kind of fuel does this thing take regular gas yeah how many gallons <laughs> um, but this car is a gas guzzler this thing it eats gas like there's no tomorrow now this has like about an 18 gallon fuel tank we've drove from home over here probably only spent one quarter of it but it definitely on long road trips it definitely likes to chug that fuel it's about an 18 gallon tank if you multiply that by like highway miles of 20 uh, miles per gallon you get about 360 probably like 330 miles of range on this car you said the, uh, the previous owner put some new things in this thing yes I got kind of lucky actually a lot of the maintenance was already done to this vehicle the previous owner actually put new suspension in here which I'm not sure exactly what the name of it was, what the brand, but it gives about a one and a half inch, about an inch to an inch and a half of lift. Um, so that's that's really handy already from the start. So I really appreciate that. What kind of tires you got on here? So these are some just regular straight Valera HTs, um, Prim, Noel, however you say that. The sizes are the stock size for 16 inch rims are 265, 70, R16s, which are decent. To start off, you know, we, we hit some trails. You guys would probably definitely see some footage right now. We went on some really steep, like at some points we were three wheeling, we were slipping. But yeah, it handled itself pretty well. Even street tires, I'm, I was surprised. I thought we were going to get stuck. But All right. as you guys know, forerunners off roading, you need that 4x4. Four four. So happily, this is just an SR5 model, and it's not those fancy limited models. So inside, we have the regular gear shifter. So inside here, we do have the second shifter for four high and four low. Also, that's two high, which is the part-time four-wheel drive. That's what you will want to drive in on the tarmac. But that works flawlessly. The four high as well switches everything. Um, the interior, it's all leather, so it has like a little bit of premium taste to it. Leather interior. The front seats kind of are ripped already. It's 22 years, so it's something to be expected but my buddy of mine did a full detail inside he steam cleaned the carpets on the back uh cleared cleaned out all of the leather kind yeah, of it looks, looks got pretty, into it you know looks pretty so, good i like it so in the back you see how dusty she is but in the back we have some cargo space over here to throw your stuff as you see i got some like yeah you're recovery straps your uh, collection of parts collection of tools and Nice. We got some little hitch, whatever recovery hitches. Yeah, your thing came with a hitch, right on. Yeah, this guy, this is the tow package, which majority of come, but and this thing's pretty solid. The seats go down, you get a little like a flat layaway kind of thing. You get more space. You can live here pretty much. Nice. How long have you had this thing for? So I already had this for about a month, actually. Since you got it, what have you done to it? 
So currently, and just for fun. So currently, um, the biggest problem I had was about like a week, a week ago. That's a hole. <laughs> yeah, into a hole. <laughs> about a week ago, um, I start. I tried turning on the car, and it was turning over really bad. Like it was barely going. It was just like it was. It couldn't turn over barely. After like four or five tries, it started. I put it into drive and it just did not go. Like if the transmission was slipping, it, uh, I put it into drive, you go up to 2,000 RPMs, it like barely starts going forward. And I thought the transmission was going out. So that definitely gave me a scare. But at the same time, the car wasn't starting properly. So it seemed like the battery was dead. So I thought, great, I have two problems right now. So I decided to fix the easy one first, of course, the battery. So I replaced the battery and the car started up perfectly fine and I put it into drive and it drove immediately like perfectly so I was like what's that you know what is that what's going on here now I've been driving for about a week already and no gear slipping and I've been doing some research I did a lot of research and a lot of times like the clutch packs on those transmissions 231,000 miles turns 32 now the clutches do wear out stuff like that so stuff can start slipping you might have to replace the clutch pack and stuff like that that's what I was getting ready to do but I read on online that bad batteries could actually cause misfiring of the solenoids inside the transmission so that don't force the clutches or the clutch packs to engage and engage the gears. And after that, my transmission has been pulling. Like this thing drives like hard. So you're saying it was a battery problem? Yeah, yeah it was that, a battery problem. Fixed. All right. So if you guys have, if you're the first problem you guys have is like a bad battery and car doesn't turn on, and you guys have transmission problems, replace the battery. That could possibly lead because there was no current running through. Yeah. So diagnose kind of the easier things. Yeah. Start replace. off basic. Don't, don't jump to the crazy don't, don't stuff. Don't replace the transmission. Yeah. Don't. What are you? What are your plans for this car? Like, what are you in the next, let's say, six months to a year? Is there anything that you plan on improving or upgrading it, making this more off-road capable? Yeah, um, this thing, this is going to be like, an, I'm planning to make this an overland build. Like, this is going to be a full-on project. It's going to be like a muddy pit kind of thing, but it's going to be worth it. So, probably the first thing I'm going to do is get new tires. Wise, very wise, yeah. Because you need those. Any, honestly, any vehicle, stock form, if you get good all-terrains, you can tackle. Like, on street tires, you guys will, you guys probably already see the footage. This thing tackled the freaking mountain and it three-wheeled and it was just perfectly fine. Um, so okay, so those. tires, do you know what kind you're going to get? Have you looked them up? I'll be getting some, so I'm kind of debating. Uh, I know you have good riches. Those are really the K2Os. Those are really popular. You can get 265 75s, yeah, um, R16s, which run you. These are like about 30 inch tires. Those are like already 31s, 31.6 inches. So it kind of gives you like that one more inch, maybe half an inch of clearance for stock uh, foreigners, stock height there's enough clearance for them so you don't have to uh, cut any fender stuff like that when you get into like the 32s 33s that's when you start cutting off fenders and stuff okay like that. so maybe like in a future video we'll see where you come where, where you buy yeah, exactly maybe have some right. spacers as well just to kind of make that more aggressive stance clear the upper control arm maybe what are you planning on doing with this front end with the front end um, currently I'll probably just keep a stock I really love the foreigners front bumpers high clearance bumper though is definitely a must I won't be doing crazy rock crawling or anything like that just mostly like kind of camping stuff so I'll keep it like this. I do need to get some fog lights. The front, I'll have a light bar. That's a really big must. Okay. These stock lights, um, these halogen lights, they are complete crap. I'll tell you that. So probably get some LEDs for that. Yeah, um, you're driving in high beams right now, just to. Yeah, I can't drive on my regular lights because number one, plus I need to adjust them. But high beams pretty much shine like the regular lights, so yeah. I'm driving on those. Okay. Um, the next things I'll probably take the side steps off. Side steps coming off. Yeah. I like the way it looks. It yeah, looks I, li I like the way it looks too, but I can see it becoming a problem. Yeah, definitely. When we were going up there on the trail, there were some rocks. We started dipping. It got way too close for my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, what about your paint? What are you going to do with that? With the paint, this paint's pretty much gone, but um, a lot of people do, and it's hard to get it right. Um, people use a bed liner and a popular, um, what's it called? A uh, popular brand is called Raptor Liner, I think. And people bedline this car and yeah, what color you probably go I'll probably go like a dark gray. It's more of like a matte color and also for roof rack. You gonna get yourself one? Yes, this currently comes with like a half body roof rack where it's kind of towards more of the back. And it does stand pretty tall, so if you get one of those baskets or anything like that, it's already gonna add even more height to it. So they sell um 
they sell full length uh, roof uh, roof racks. Yeah. And a lot of the companies started doing bolt-ons where you don't have to drill into your body bolt or anything like that. Yeah. So you just bolt it on in the front. You bring it out here. There's maybe a little clip or whatever it holds on to these like uh, body lines, and it presses here and it works really good. You, people put rooftop tents on them. Those are probably like another what 300, 400 pounds extra. They hold on perfectly fine. Also window tent to get some extra privacy. Don't mind a rear bumper for maybe the, the extra spear because it won't be fitting inside because it's a bigger diameter and for some jerry can space, yeah. you know. All right, Dan, thanks for uh, sharing everything about your Forerunner. Yeah, of course. Have My fun pleasure. upgrading it, and then uh, we'll show Thank you. We'll show our viewers maybe some more trips of how, how much fun you're having with yeah, it. Yeah, we'll keep you guys updated, maybe future projects or whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Driving Dan, thanks. Two days you guys have a great one. Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I